Hi everybody, so we live on a planet that is 71% covered in water and yet water scarcity and water shortages are a huge issue for us and that's because life on planet Earth, or rather the Earth part of planet Earth, can't cope with salty water and most of our water is salty. It's only about 3% that's fresh. Of that, most of it's locked up in things like ice caps and only 1.2% is left for us to drink. Of course, that water comes from somewhere and it all comes from the sea. It's a natural process called the water cycle. Basically, the sun hits the surface of the sea, evaporates the water, condenses into clouds, falls as rain, creating rivers and lakes that flow back to the sea. There is, in fact, at any one time, more fresh water in the air than there is in all the rivers and lakes put together. Six times as much, in fact. So to get more water, there is essentially two things we can do. We can either look at alternative resources, that is, try to pull that water out of the air, or we can look back to the sea and try to remove the salt from the sea. And of course, that process is known as desalination. Now, desalination is essentially very simple. And you take some salt water, input some energy, and separate the salt and the water. And there are a surprising number of ways of doing that. Unfortunately, they all have the same issue, and that is the energy cost of doing it. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to remove salt from water. But technically, it is simple. It can be as simple as digging a hole in the ground with a cup in the bottom. Or you can replace that with a bowl with the seawater at the bottom of your bowl. And what happens is the sun's rays heat up the water, causing it to evaporate. And when it hits a bit of plastic, of course, it condenses. Because there's a rock in the middle, that condensed water rolls to the centre and drips into the cup. That simple system has a lot to commend it. I mean, it's super simple, it's really cheap, it's very effective, and it still needs a lot of energy, but it gets that energy directly from the sun, because it has its problems. It takes forever. I mean, it's about eight hours and you get half a cup of water, and if you were to try to do that for everybody, you'd need seven Earths all wrapped in plastic. So it's not particularly adaptable to a large scale, but the attractiveness of a simple system like that leads us to think of how we would actually improve it. Now, what it is, is, is this idea that if you try to heat a bulk of water directly from the sun, of course you've got a massive bulk, you've got to raise the temperature of that, it takes ages, and then you start to get evaporation, and sometimes that can take all day, so by the time it's evaporating you've gone into the night and everything's cooling down. And then there's the idea that if you can separate those layers, so that instead of trying to heat the bulk of water, all you're trying to heat is a tiny fraction of that water that you're separating from the bulk. It should be much more efficient. I don't know if you've ever met this stuff. It's Oasis Foam. And this is amazing stuff. It's supposed to mimic the plant cell. And if I pop that into water, it will wick the water up like that far. It really sucks the water into it and keeps that water, which is um, an awesome thing when you think about it. Now, of course, if we do that and direct the sun on here, it's maybe going to get warm. But I have this as well, which is a black carbon felt. This is an activated carbon felt, actually. And my thought is, if we get that bulk of water and we stick in the oasis, and then we lay some felt on top of it, the sun will heat the black, because it's black, the oasis will wick the water into the carbon and we should get a more efficient and faster rate of evaporation. Here's our oasis with our black carbon felt on it. Uh, here's our bowl with nothing in. This is uh, two kilos of water, so two litres, exactly the same here, two litres of water. Let's set them outside in the sun, set a timer going and then every hour go and take a weight measurement. This is the setup and it's pretty simple stuff. All I've really done is put these two bowls of water out on a wall in the sun and the wind. And um, this one is actually responding about 50% better than this one. So this is evaporating a hell of a lot quicker than this is evaporating. Now it's pretty cool that covering something with a bit of blank felt can have such a dramatic improvement, but of course like every solution, it brings a whole set of other problems because as it's busily evaporating that water, it's leaving the salt behind. And so that felt will become clogged with salt. And that's the big problem with a lot of these kind of solar evaporation systems. Or rather, has been until MIT came out with this paper this year. 
It uses something called thermohaline circulation. It's a circulation method that happens in the oceans. Now basically, when water gets hot, it gets less dense. And when water has a lot of salt in, it gets more dense. So the salty water has a propensity for sinking down to the bottom and the hotter fresh water rises to the top. And you can see this in a dye colored water where you've got normal water and salt water. You can see how quickly the dye is separated. What that means is this whole system doesn't become clogged up with salt. The salt is contained in the brine, circulates through the system and is discharged before it gets too salty. The researchers reckon that half a square meter can produce sort of four to six liters per hour of fresh water. What it means is that the first time ever it's possible to use a simple solar still to produce drinking water that is actually cheaper than the tap water that is supplied in the average household. Because it doesn't clog up, it's going to be years before a still like that actually needs replacement parts. So if we have a bit of a better look at the structure of it, we can see it's actually pretty straightforward and could be reproduced using oasis foam and carbon felt like we did in the earlier experiment. And it's exactly the kind of engineering that I love. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's inexpensive both to make and maintain, and it's a very clever use of a natural principle. The paper incidentally is open access and I've put a link to it down in the description should everyone have a read of it and maybe give it a go at replicating it. But I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.